Hi, welcome to Tomb Raider Part 11. Uh, we're on the playthrough here, and you left us last time, um, just having made it to Shipwreck Beach. Now, there's an XP box on top of that, and I was trying to work out how to get to it. Couldn't work out for the life of me what was going on there. So, instead, we will crack on with the mission. Won't let me on that little thing there, either. Anyway, it's up this ladder, and we are heading over to this Portuguese warboat after killing some seagulls, because <laughs> what else would you do? <laughs> uh, I think it's weird the way you only get experience for killing animals when you manage to loot their corpse, which makes killing the seagulls a little bit pointless, because a lot of the time they just end up in the sea. Amazing. Portuguese. Looks to be early 18th century. Hmm. So there are these two guys patrolling here, but they go down pretty quickly. Um, in fact, you don't really even have to let them finish talking because there aren't too many of them there at all. I think there's just those two. Over the other side, there's a few more. Now, there's a document up there, and I faffed for a very long time trying to get that document. Uh, that was the first of many deaths. In the end, all you have to do is shimmy up here. You've actually got to go all the way around to get to that. Because uh, what we're going to do is cross over here and then acquire the pulley, or whatever it was that Jonah and Reyes wanted in the previous video. I forget what they called it. That thing, anyway. And that drops that mast, which makes a handy platform across to the other side. Sure, magic pockets, why not? The block and tackle. There we go, and that's what it's called. Anyway, there's a few dudes here. Uh, I've run through this a few times now, and I haven't found a decent way to stealth this bit, so I think you've just got to go all out combat. Whatever happens, th those guys are going to turn up from Lord knows where. Uh, and obviously, being a rubbish shot isn't helping anyone. But anyway, there's a document in here, a relic, sorry, in here on a table. It's a brown jade box of some kind. <laughs> And then a bit of uh, lootensy lootensy. And it's back down the zip line to head back to the dudes and drop off the tackle and block and then trying to get back up there as well for that XP box, which is frustrating me. Anyway. Thanks. Uh, must have scared them off. Well, Whitman turns up after running here. Must be fitter than I thought. And Laura's suspicious because he is. There was some gunfire, and he comes running in. Anyway, long and the short of it is, Reyes tells Laura to stop being so suspicious, and then Jonah gives us don 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 this compound bow. I don't know where he found it. Thank you, Jonah. Oh, but we're gonna take it. So I guess what this means is even if you haven't been upgrading your bits aggressively, you're still going to get a pretty tasty bow at this point. Uh, the big bonus about this bow is that it will shoot into craggy rocks. So we're going to head over that way. You can also talk to these dudes, but I haven't found them having anything interesting to say. I don't know, if I dig around there might be an achievement for burning out all their um, talking. <laughs> all their talking, <laughs> all their conversation options. Wow. Uh, but I honestly couldn't be bothered with it. And the napalm arrows, which I've got now, are quite fun. They basically leave uh, a little more damage than the fire arrows. They sort of drop these pools of fire nearby. Anyway, from here you can see we can fire it into these craggy rocks there. and then make our way over this way. So it's off to find Alex who's disappeared going looking for a, um, I don't know, some tools to fix the boat up. Like a hammer and a screwdriver from the Endurance. And okay, screwdriver I kind of get, but you can really do that with a good knife, and I'm pretty sure they've got knives. And a hammer you can do with a shoe. It seems, well, I don't know, maybe I'm oversimplifying. 
Uh, we'll see. Anyway, there's a bunch of salvage around here, around the back here. You can hear these guards chittering about Boris. And there's a clue, that big son of a bitch is not going to be happy. And sure enough, he's really not. And he's big, too. Anyway, up here there were a couple of guys to kill. Uh, there was much faffing down below. But um, I ended up just cutting that because those just running in circles for the longest time. Uh, there was a relic down there, but that's all there was. There's also a weird shotgun wall that if you blow it open provides a shortcut to get you back up there not that you really ever need to get back up there again. It's also, uh, the, the level layout on this one is a bit weird. Just because all the stuff that you open up is sort of redundant. Anyway. A couple of corpses there and a tomb through here. Uh, there's a relic on the way to the tomb, a jade headrest. I think that was a jade headrest. And there's some loot there. But heading up here, there's another relic here, I think. Uh, which is a photo. Of um, a dad and two kids. And we found the kids' toys. We found a toy train and a rabbit belonging to Millie and Coco. Uh, and we upgraded to a commando rifle, which is nice. It's good that Lara is so good both with archaeology and upgrading weapons using random stuff that she finds lying around. Anyway, this took me a little while to work out just because I didn't walk close enough to the console up here. Uh, like four or five times I didn't walk close enough to it. Only to find out that if you walk close enough the X button appears here. See. Uh, so eventually when I realised that it is back down here to push the other button. There we go, then there's a shotgun wall there that I managed to shoot through the crack, thinking that would do something. This did take me the longest time. Um, from here you can pull that, and that lifts this light, which is in the water, making it electric, out for a short amount of time. So the idea is basically you want to free this raft, which is tied up there. So shooting it with fire frees it up. I tried standing on it and shooting stuff to pull it over, but that doesn't work. What you need to do is stand there and pull it back towards you. And you do that a couple of times. There we go. And then what you can do is jump from there around to the platform around the corner there. Then lift the light up. You've got about 10 seconds after it goes up to get across here. Then pull the raft over and get the light on top of the raft. Now I went and had a poke around in that room just uh, to our right now. But there's nothing in there at all. Um, I say nothing at all. Maybe there was some salvage or something, but nothing significant and it took me a while to work out what I was supposed to do here well then once you crack it this thing about all these tombs is it's actually they're not difficult but they probably give you a minute or two's oh, puzzlement to try and work out what's going on uh, which is nice but once you work them out they're super easy but anyway there is the treasure and there's a map as well do we get a handgun part? I forget Tomb raided. No handgun part for us. Anyway, out of that tomb, it's this way. And we're heading over to the cliffside bunker. And we've got to get to the wreck of the endurance. There we go. And there's a document on the way here. Can't get through here yet, we're going to need the rope ascender that we get off Boris. You'll see. Try to find something stronger. And it's a bit weird because basically all it is is a pulley that you hold. And given that she's pulling as hard as she can, I don't understand how having a mechanism which just pulls for you is going to be any stronger than the force you can exert. Because ultimately her weight is going to be the contributing factor. 
but ugh, no, I'm just being boring and geeky now, so I'll shut up. Anyway, uh, you fire the arrow across here into this craggy wall, and now we're at the research bunker proper. Uh, research bunker, cliffside bunker. And you can see the wreck of the Endurance just down there to the right. Try not to fall off that rope and miss it, that's kind of lame. Um, but we make our way over here. There we are. And there's a big old gun there. And it's like, I just... Uh, am I going to rant about this? I think I probably am. Do we really need to go all the way to the Endurance to find some tools? Surely. Like, these guys here, for example, are doing welding, and they're doing something with an engine block. Surely they've got some tools on them. Do you know what I mean? Anyway. I realize it's just a plot device, but you would think that you would have to get something more specific than a screwdriver and a hammer. Although we'll probably get to the cutscene and realize that actually it was much more than a screwdriver and a hammer. I honestly don't remember. In fact, I'm not even sure that we make it all the way to the Endurance on this video. We don't, do we? So it'll be the next video that we check it out. So the rant is going to last a couple of videos here, you'll be happy to know. Nothing like a two-video rant. <laughs> anyway, stealthing our way through these guys. There's a few of them scattered around. I think there's a guy over there at the back as well. But then you shoot this engine block and that drops the engine onto those guys. And then two or three guys drop down. But at this point, two or three guys is a lot easier to handle than a whole troop. Um... And they come down periodically, but you can see they've got helmets on too, which is a bit annoying. So at this stage they're all starting to get quite a lot of armour, but one of the upgrades you can get for the next level of arrow is armour piercing, which is a lot of fun. But actually grenade arrows are just so much more entertaining, they just blow everything out of the water. Try not to die there. I'll pick it up here, but I mean you basically get the idea, these guys are just coming down on ropes and... It's another biggish fight. Probably should have broken out the grenade water and just been tossing grenades all over the place. But there's something I quite enjoy about the bow. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I read my own mind. Sorry, I recorded this footage probably a week and a half ago now, and I've just cut it together today because um, I've been doing the walkthroughs and also just been. I've had a mad week of just socialising and. I've kind of been hung over and faffing and yeah, just avoiding doing videos. I'm not sure why, so I apologise for the delay and everything coming up. Like all these collectible videos have actually been uploaded for about a week. I just can't be bothered to go through and deal with the tags and the descriptions and everything, which is awful. I'm sorry, it's very, very lazy of me. Um, and I'm sure many of you have already finished the game and looked at other people's videos, but I got there eventually. And as you know, I don't always get stuff out quickly, but hopefully I do uh, a solid job by the time it eventually comes out. Ah, barrel! So that is the napalm arrow. You can see that it just leaves a trail of fire in its wake. I think there's... um. When you head up here, I think there's a shotgun part in one of these. And it seems like the weapons parts are semi-random. Like there's a few places where they always are, but I think if you miss them, there's a chance of you picking them up randomly later on. Oh, spear guy. Should maybe turn up the brightness on this bit a little bit. That's what I'll do. I'll go back and edit the brightness after this because I can barely see what's going on here. Anyway. Oh, no, no shotgun par for me. And then more fighting. This is basically a pretty crazy fight all the way up. Probably be less crazy if I could shoot straight. And it's interesting because for my pickup run, 
uh, for my collectibles run I've put the combat to easy just because it's less hassle. And the auto aim is phenomenal and they also take a lot less hits to kill. But you basically pull the trigger sort of aiming, I don't know, within half a screen of them and it'll snap to the middle of their chest. It's kind of uh, extremely generous. But anyway, head up here, and then there's a few more guys up here, but thankfully they're standing next to a dirty explodey barrel. So, they're gonna take it. Here we go. Gaboosh! And then there's some bits and pieces to mop up around there, and there's a treasure map there that was perplexing me for a very long time. But it turns out you need the rope ascender from the Endurance to get there. Uh, and there's some other bits and pieces around here, and there's a banner in the distance if you didn't get that. Anyway, um, after looting all those bodies, which isn't a lot of fun, we get to this document and this camp, and that's where we will leave it for now. If you missed part 9, that's back there where we free our friends. And there's Boris on the right. He's kind of a mean old goat man. Uh, a mean old Russian, anyway. There we go. Arrow in the head, Boris. And I actually forgot to record that on this playthrough, so I took that with easy combat. And he's actually, he goes down a lot more quickly on easy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.